It's tax time, ladies and gentlemen, and this year, Mills Financial Group has some amazing programs for all of us, especially, though, if you're a truck driver, contract worker, real estate professional, and definitely those that are self-employed. Now, Mills Financial will get you the maximum refund you deserve. We're talking cash advances up to $9,500 in just one hour. Want to get started? Give them a call, 877-634-6299. Now, Mills Financial Group has several locations across the United States of America, including Philly, New Orleans, and our favorite location, the Battery Atlanta, home of the Atlanta Braves, making tax season that much easier for you. Call them, 877-634-6299. Now, 2020 was tough, and Mills Financial Group wants to help you get what you deserve during tax season. Hit them up, 877-634-6299, or visit the website, Mills Financial Financial Group. That's M I L L Z Financial Group.com. They got your back. The opinions and views expressed by this program are those of the program, program host, and guest, and do not necessarily reflect the views of Power 108.9 and its officials. We hope you enjoy. Yeah, I get lifted. You get lifted. We get lifted. Let's get lifted, I get lifted, you get lifted, we get lifted, let's get lifted, I get lifted. Beautiful people, we're back, guys, with Chocolate Tangerine on Power 108.9. I'm so excited that you're here. Can't you tell? My name is Tanjanika, and I'm your host today on Chocolate Tangerine, okay? We cover a lot on this channel. We'll say that. We cover a lot. There's been some changes, but how about we come back strong? This is Season three of Chocolate Tangerine. I'm so excited that you guys are here. Listen, some changes have been made, and I just want to be the first to tell you. But what? Not, it's not a better day to come on and tell you guys than Valentine's Day, right? That's what today is, the day of love. And I know you love me. I know you do. I know you miss me. And I know you want to know where I've been. So let's talk about it. Let's bring it in. Sit down. Have a seat. Right? Get you some tea, some coffee, get you a hot toddy if you're feeling bad. Because this, this is Valentine's Day. I missed you guys so much. Chocolate Tangerine had to go through some changes, though, because we had some discoveries, and I want to tell you guys about it. So back in November, I took a training, and I got certified as a firearms instructor. So I am a certified firearms instructor. Your girl is out here saving lives, okay? Your girl is out here fulfilling her calling by educating those about their rights. And I'm doing the same thing that I was doing in cannabis, but I'm doing it in the firearms industry. Well, I came across, I was doing some research, just figuring out how I can do both, be in, this, in both worlds, cannabis and firearms. And I came across this letter. This letter was dated September 21st, 2011. And it is an open letter to all federal firearms licensees, right? And so this is a letter that they sent to... Uh, people who issue weapons to other people. So if you fill out the form, these people have the weapon, they have to run your background and then they can sell you the weapon, right? So this is what they said. The alcohol, tobacco, firearms, and explosives industry had a number of inquiries regarding the use of medical marijuana and the ability for federal firearm laws. He said a number of states had passed legislation allowing state laws the use of pos possession of marijuana for medical purposes and some of those states issue a card authorizing the holder to use or possess marijuana under that state law. It says, as you know, federal law prohibits any person who is an unlawful user or addicted to any controlled substance from shipping, transporting, receiving, or possessing firearms or ammunition. Did you, did you catch that? Did you, let me bring it back. It prohibits any person who is un, an un, <laughs> it prohibits any person who is an unlawful user or addicted to any controlled substance from shipping, transporting, receiving, or possessing firearms or ammunition. Since marijuana is listed under the Controlled Substance Act as a Schedule I controlled substance, there are no exceptions in the federal law for marijuana, especially for medical purposes. Ain't that crazy? So it says it makes it unlawful for any person to sell or otherwise dispose of any firearm or ammunition to any person knowing or having reasonable cause to believe that such person is an unlawful user or addicted to a controlled substance. Therefore, any person who uses or is addicted to marijuana, regardless of whether his state has passed legislation authorizing marijuana use for medical purposes, it is an unlawful user 
and they are addicted to a controlled substance and they are prohibited by federal law from possessing firearms or ammunition. So for me, that was a clear cut line in the sand. I had to make a decision, I had to choose. I am a veteran, you all know that, right? I did two tours in Iraq and the best part of the last eight years for me was finding cannabis in all forms, right? Whether it be business-wise or medical-wise or my network, I have had the most amazing time in this industry. And I truly made the decision to walk away because I am also a proud proponent of our Second Amendment rights. And I truly believe that we have the right to bear arms and that is in the Constitution for a reason. And so I decided to focus primarily on the firearms industry. And so I did a lot of soul searching. I talked to my business coach. I had to do a lot to get ready to transition. But we are now fully focused on Chocolate Tangerine, on educating you about your firearms rights, about personal safety and protection, especially women. Once I started to do more research, because you guys know I do a lot of research, I found out that women are the most targeted gender a woman over the age of 12 or a female gendered person over the age of 12 is attacked sexually or violently every 107 seconds. That is crazy to me. And I feel like people truly know how to spot a good victim, if that makes sense to you. They know what attributes, what characteristics to look for. They know when you're not paying attention, when you don't have situational awareness. They know when you're alone and by yourself. They watch all of these things. And so I truly feel like it's my calling now to educate people about their rights, not only with firearms, but other alternatives as well, whether it be pepper spray or, you know, a knife that you carry or whatever the case may be getting you physically in shape. Some of y'all can't run. Some of you can't run out of NAN situation. That's a problem. So we need to make sure that you guys are physically in shape, you're mentally in shape, and you understand what's going on in this world. So that's step one. I wanted to tell you guys about that and just tell you how the direction of the, of the show is going to go and how it's going to transition and move. So we're going to start to really focus on personal and um, business protection because I'm a business owner. So... With that being said, guys, we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to come right back, and I'm going to talk to you guys more about some things that you need to know about, like your Miranda rights. Do you know where those came from? We're going to talk about that today. We're going to also talk about legislation that's coming about gun control. You need to be aware of. That's really, really important, and we're going to talk about other things in the industry. So make sure you keep it locked right here to Chocolate Tangerine on Power 108.9. <laughs> All that baloney they force feed you on social media? Yes. Then get connected to Power 108.9, a station for the people. Mornings with Michael McFadden and Jay Nash. Your mornings will never be the same. Tune in Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 9 on Power 108.9. Hold on, hold on. Aren't, aren't we forgetting something? Uh, hold, hold on, hold on, Alpha Male. I, I, I think we're forgetting something here. Yeah, yeah. Di didn't we just... Pick up a new station? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm... Now you can also catch Mornings with Michael and Jay Nash in Philadelphia on Philly Jams 95.3 FM. So if you're in the Philadelphia area, tune us in and turn us up. Mornings with Michael and Jay Nash on Power 108.9 and Philly Jams 95.3 FM. Keep, keep, keep it locked. Power 108.9, the station for the people. And we're back, guys. Welcome back to Chocolate Sandrine on Power 
I'm so excited that you guys are here. I'm always excited that you guys are here. I want to talk to you guys about some bills that are coming out that you guys need to know about, okay? And it really affects your Second Amendment rights. And you guys know I specialize in legislation education, so it is my job to break down these bills for you guys in a way that you can understand it because they put all these words in there, they put all these pages in there, and they do this by design so that you don't read it, and they give you cliff notes that are in their favor, and then you vote for it, and then in the end, you be like, oh, shit, I ain't know that's what it said, because you ain't read it, because you didn't read it. So let me tell you what happened. Let me tell you what happened. It's Black History Month, ain't it? It's still Black History Month. We will, we will, it's Black History Year, number one, for me, but it's February 14th, so it's definitely Black History Month. Let me tell you what happened. Senator out of Texas, Dallas, to be exact. Dallas so black. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. I don't even know how this happened. Senator Sheila Jackson Lee introduced a bill. She introduced two bills, actually, H.R. 125 and H.R. 127. H.R. 127 has the entire gun community up in arms, and it absolutely should. I never go by what someone else says about a bill. I always read it for myself first to make sure that it's authentic, to make sure that what their points are is valid, and then I go from there. I actually read H.R. 127. It's like two pages, three pages. I don't know how many pages, but it's short enough for you to read it to know that this is some BS and you need to pay attention. Let's go into it. What does it say? I got you. First of all, this is what the bill says. To provide for the licensing of firearms and ammunition possession and the registration of firearms and to prohibit the possession of certain ammunition. That in itself, you should pay attention. That, that first sentence told me a lot. And I was like, oh, wow. Oh, okay. Well, here we go. This is what Sheila proposes. Because at this point, I, the senator, all the, all the, listen, all the respect factor is on pause right now for Sheila. Let me tell you, the ATF shall establish a system. Now, this is the alcohol, tobacco, and firearms shall establish a system for the licensing, the possession of firearms or ammunition in the U.S. and for the registration with the Bureau of each firearm present in the U.S. Each firearm present in the U.S. You're going to have to submit the make, the model, and the serial number of your firearm you're going to have to submit the identity of the owner, the date the firearm was acquired by the owner, and where it's going to be stored. You're going to have to submit who you loan it to and for how long. When does this take effect? It takes effect three months after the bill. So if the bill is passed, any person that owns a firearm already, you have three months to get your firearm registered. And if you purchase after the date, then it's automatically done, okay? The attorney general, she putting stuff on his plate, the attorney general has to maintain a database of all firearms registered and make the database public so all members of the public, the federal, state, and local law enforcement, U.S. armed forces, and all government. Did you, did you hear what I just said? The database of all of our firearms will be made public to all members of the public federal, state, and local law enforcement, U.S. armed forces, and all government. The criteria for this is that you have to be 21 years of age and up. You have to do a criminal background check. You have to get a psych evaluation. You have to have 24 hours of mandatory training that's been approved by the Attorney General on the use, safety, and storage of firearms. You have to have an insurance policy. You have to have an antique firearm license. So for all my gun heads that's been collecting since back in the day, World War II, all that stuff, you gotta get a license for that. There's gonna be a mandatory license if you own a military style weapon. And you have to have, do, have to do 24 hours of attorney general approved training. Now military style weapons are literally everything that they don't like. <laughs> so <laughs> it's literally everything that they don't like. Anything that they have ever had a problem with, including but not limited to AR-15s. That is definitely on the list. Okay, I need you guys to know that they put like 15 different weapons on there. So you can check that out. Look up HR-127. The psych evaluation. This, is, this gets worse and worse and worse as you continue to read. The psych evaluation is going to be from your spouse, your former spouse, Two other family members have to all determine your mental, emotional, and relational stability 
in relation to firearms. Your former spouse, I know my ex-husband ain't got shit nice to say to me, to say about me. So why would you ask him anything about me? Okay, he don't even know me no more. So like, <laughs> how dare you include him? Okay, you will automatically be denied if you've been hospitalized for a mental illness, if you have attempted suicide, if you committed suicide. That's literally in there. If you're in suicide, I don't think you'll be applying, but whatever, okay. Um, brain disease, addicted to a controlled substance. You have to renew every year for five years and then every three years after that with eight more hours of training. How much does it cost, Tangie? I'm glad you asked. It's $800, th the price of an actual weapon, $800. You can't gift a gun to anyone anymore, and you can't possess ammo without a license. You can't possess ammo without a license. This is real. The penalty... Let's talk about the penalty. This is Sheila from Dallas. The penalty is up to $150,000 and a 15-year minimum for your first offense. It is unlawful to have a large capacity magazine. Do you know what they define as a large capacity magazine? Anything over 10 rounds. We are all going to fucking jail if this passes, I can assure you. This is the most egregious bill. I've read bills in cannabis that weren't this egregious. This is a, such a, a step over the line of what the Second Amendment actually is and what it stands for and what is actually written in the Constitution. It's actually crazy that this was even submitted. But this is, um, you know, what they're putting in. Now, I'm not a Democrat or Republican. Listen, I, I did what I could do. I did what I could do. I, I just didn't want to get disowned by my father. That's the only reason I honestly voted. So I voted, but what I'm trying to say is, like, we have Democrats who have taken over the House, the Senate, and the presidency. And, and in all actuality, that sounds like it might be a good thing for us, but we need to pay attention to this because once laws are passed, the immediate people who feel the like the major part of it are black people. Like, let's just keep it real, okay? So if you have people that have access to a database that tells your address of where you keep your guns at, right? Of where you keep your ammo at, where you're storing all of your protection at. They can easily run up in your spot, kill you and your whole family, and, and run off in the sunset. And I, don't, I truly doubt they're going to register themselves. Like, criminals don't do things like that. So it's not a situation where this can work in our favor ever, in anyone's favor who believes in the Second Amendment. Now, with this, right, because I've been into the, I've been trans, I'm transitioning into the firearms industry, I'm really learning a lot. And what I learned is um, gun control really comes from a good place originally. Like when you think of it, people really just don't want people to die by the hands of maniacs and people who are out here just murdering people, AKA mostly white people. Okay, so this is like what they want to, so first gun, gun control laws I was reading was like in 1968. That was when the first one was really passed. And this happened after John F. Kennedy was assassinated. So he was assassinated in 63. The dude that assassinated him bought his weapon through the mail. So they had to literally make that illegal and outlaw mail-ordered rifles. So that was step one. Then, in 1968, Dr. King was assassinated, and in the same year, Robert Kennedy was assassinated. So that happened like summertime, April, and then June or something like that. By October, they had passed gun control laws. So that was the first one, and it's been ratified. So we'll talk about that over the show or whatever, the different gun control laws that we have currently. But I can see how it was in an effort to try to make things better, but this is where we are. So. Let's go into something else that I want to talk about because this is really interesting to me. I had a situation that happened like three days ago that really like made me feel away. And I'm a Libra. I have, you know, scales. So it's like my scales were all off balance. So this is what happened. I'm sitting over a friend's house and documentaries are just automatically playing on his TV. And a documentary came up about the Vegas shooter. I had never seen it, never heard of what happened. I don't own a television. I don't watch TV. I don't have cable, none of that stuff. So I remember, I ain't no telling what I was doing. It happened on my birthday in 2017. So I ain't no telling what ratchetness I was involved in. So I was completely consumed in my own world. I had no idea what was going on 
in Vegas. This is what happened, y'all. This is literally what happened. A gentleman goes into, I'm just, because I can't believe what <laughs> happened. A 62-year-old gentleman goes into the Mandalay Bay Hotel in Vegas. This is a major casino hotel. He literally, um, he's a high roller. So they don't really pay attention to him. But his high rolling is like slots and shit like that. So they really not paying attention to him. They like, oh, I bet. He was the least likely suspect on their list. That's literally what the, the security guard said. He was the least likely person on their list. So he goes to the hotel. And mind you, he's been scoping out different events. They find out like he's been scoping out major events like on his computer when they see him. I mean, when they finally go and, like, do some research or whatever. He's been looking for an event. So the event that he finally came on was a Route 91 Harvest Music Festival, okay? So this is a music festival. There's a gang of people outside in Vegas um, at this festival, okay? So what he did was he got on the 32nd floor. He rented two suites. Ding, ding, ding. Strike one, okay? Just, just one human Two sweets. Okay, fine. All right. They don't question it. Okay, fine. This 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 what got me. This man, this man came into this in said hotel with 21 bags of luggage by himself. I don't know where you do that at. I don't know how that wasn't caught. I don't know why no one thought to check him at all or to see what was in those pieces of luggage. 21 bags for one person, two rooms. Okay. Um, he rented the room on the 32nd floor at 10.05 p.m. is when he starts firing his weapons. 10.05 p.m. is when it starts. 10.15 is when it's over. 10 minutes. 10 minutes is all that this whole incident was. He let off a 1,000 rounds. A 1,000 rounds. He had 5,000 more rounds ready. He had 5,000 more rounds ready. When I saw the weapons that were in the room, he had two suites. Both rooms had weapons completely in them. These are weapons that I shoot every day. I go to the range maybe twice, three times a week now because I'm really into this. This is something I'm really excited about. I go to the range, and I shoot most of the semi-automatic rifles that he had, semi-automatic guns and the rifles that he had in the room. I let off a thousand rounds like it's not it's not unusual for me to have that many rounds with those many magazines that's not unusual either what got me was the level of devastation that he caused in that 10 minutes right so he killed 60 people he wounded 411 in total 867 people were hurt or injured because of the trampling trying to get away trying to run over each other etc several people were shot they had interviews with the people that lived and survived it was a wonder that they that was amazing to me one lady was shot in the head and she lived that was extremely fortunate for her um and he had no motive like they said he really had no reason as that he didn't leave a note he ended up killing himself and that's how the story ended basically but there was no reason no rhyme no reason or whatever and so because of that a lot of people were talking about gun control and when I after I watched that video I was like oh my god I get I get how they feel like this is a problem now that I'm on the other side of it I'm just like no everyone should have the right to have those weapons just because one lunatic came about like that's not a reason to ban everyone's access to these said weapons because I truly not only enjoy them but being proficient in them will and can save your life okay so I I really was perplexed about that the other day I'm like I get why they are harping on gun control so hard like he literally had an arsenal it was honestly the sexiest arsenal I had ever seen but I don't want to like make this a thing but it was just crazy to me number one the level of white privilege that i couldn't get past 21 bags of luggage he brought in each day he brought in like maybe six bags that day or like 
you know, five bags or three bags. Like, there's no way in a major hotel, not even a hotel. We're not even going to say hotel. We're going to say casino because you're supposed to watch everything that goes on in a casino. This is supposed to be the most guarded place almost. And you allow a man, one man, one guy, not a family, one guy to bring in 21 bags of luggage without asking what it is. Bell hops helped him. Them shit's heavy as hell. Guns aren't light. Ammo ain't light. Ammo is the heaviest shit you can carry. So there's absolutely no reason he should have been authorized or allowed to do that. He called room service. He then shot a person that then came up trying to, you know, check the door. It was just a lot that happened. And I had no idea. And this all happened on my birthday. I was, like, very, very perplexed about that. But so I bring this all around to say I get Senator Sheila Jackson Lee. She came up with this. This bill was based on, see, people don't read. This bill was based on a young lady. She was a Pakistani intern that came to the United States. She had a white little girl best friend. The goddamn white little girl best friend killed her. You can look up the story. So this is based on, this legislation is allegedly based on that, but I don't think she was trying to help. I think this is literally an attack on gun owners, and this is a way to slip this in, because any other time, you wouldn't have cared about Pakistani in immigrants. I'm not even trying to be funny. I'm trying to be dead ass. Like, they don't care about you. They're not. They're using you as a pawn and using your situation to benefit them in any way that they can. So it's super unfortunate, but make sure you look out for H.R. 127. Please, please vote this down. Please vote this down. This is an infringement on everyone's rights, not even just, and it's Black History Month, and we see the way the country is. You need a way to protect yourself. So that's what that is. I wanted to tell you guys about that. So next, I want to talk to you about something else. This is very interesting to me. Do you know where the term Miranda rights came from? Do you know? Are you aware? I didn't know either. I was like, who the hell is Miranda? And why we called it out the hub? What she do? You know, I had to look it up. Whole time, it wasn't even a she. Wasn't even a she. And it wasn't even a white woman. It was a Mexican. His name was Ernesto Miranda. <laughs> who the thunk? Crazy. This is what happened. Ernesto stole $8 from a bank teller. This is what Ernesto did, right? He kidnapped her and raped her. So Ernesto was with the shit, okay? They locked him up. The, the arresting officers locked him up. And Ernesto, during cross-examination during the trial, he first of all, Ernesto confessed to everything. He said, I did it. That's what happened. This is the story. He confessed to everything. During cross-examination, his lawyers found out he was not read or told that he had the right to an attorney, which violated his Sixth Amendment right. So the Sixth Amendment is the right to counsel. Fifth Amendment is the right to remain silent. So because of that, they had to throw the whole thing out, which pissed people off. So now they came up with the Miranda rights so that to let you know you have the right to remain silent, you have the right to an attorney. If you can't afford one, one will be provided for you. Anything you say can and will be used against you. So they had to come up with, you know, something concrete that every, and, and it varies from state to state or jurisdiction to jurisdiction, but those are the core meaty parts that you have to have in it. You have to tell them about their Fifth and Sixth Amendment rights and that anything they say can and will be used against them. So they retried Ernesto Miranda. He was convicted based on the evidence. He didn't confess to his ex-girlfriend that he did it, and then they went and got her. She testified against him, and it was a whole thing. Okay, so Ernesto, this is crazy to me. The story was crazy to me. Ernesto gets out of jail in 1973, right? And he's in a bar. He gets into a fight at a bar, and a dude stabs and kills him. Dude stabs and kills Ernesto, and when they arrested him, he remained silent because of his Miranda rights and got off on that shit. Ain't that crazy? That's crazy. Ernesto got killed. And they can't even arrest the dude that killed him because <laughs> he remained silent because of Ernesto. How ironic was that? That was so interesting to me. And I like learning the history of stuff because you need to know things like that. You need to know. I feel like black people are the most involved in the judicial system and don't know shit about 
the judicial system. That is so unfortunate to me. I learned that a lot when I was in the cannabis industry. It's like you just don't know your rights. And it's a Google search away. It's literally right in the palm of your hands. And so I implore you to know what your local, state, and federal gun laws are so that you know what your rights are, so you can know how to protect yourself, so you're not out here vulnerable because the one time I guarantee you that you need it, you're not going to have it. That's not going to be good enough. Your family's not going to understand that. You know, that's who you're trying to come home to, aren't you? So make sure you are aware of that. Make sure you uh, do the best that you can to understand what your rights are and what you can do to protect yourself. But that's Ernesto Miranda, and that's what happened in history. So we're going to take a break real quick, and we're going to come right back with some more information that you can use on Chocolate Tangerine. Keep it locked. Yo, it's Michael McFadden for our friends over at Credit Building Professionals. You know what they do? They help their clients achieve better credit. How? Late payments, fraud, liens, charge-offs, student loans. They do it all. Get results in 30 to 90 days, and it's very simple to contact them. Hit them up on their website, creditbuildingprofessionals.com, or give them a call, 678-447-2012. Once again, 678 678- 4472012 Tell them you heard it on Power 108.9 What up Credit Credit Jane Green Beauty is a luxury skincare line enhanced by CBD. CBD is 100% legal and it won't get you high. What's so great about CBD is it's the perfect balance of nutrients to moisturize your skin and it's anti-inflammatory, so it helps reduce swelling and puffiness, leaving you with a youthful glow. Jane Green Beauty is bold. Jane Green Beauty is opulent and decadent, and I promise you, if you try it today, it will be your new favorite skincare regimen. Try our full line of Jane Green Beauty products today. Jane Green Beauty is a luxury... We're back, guys. Welcome back to Chocolate Century. So we are going to round out the show. It's still Black History Month. I definitely want to talk to you guys about black people and gun rights. That's going to be heavy on this show because I'm black and I'm a gun owner. And I think that's important for us to know. Again, just like every other industry, we're not part of it. We're not heavy involved. And there's a reason. You know, there's a real big reason why there's an underlining racial stigma in the gun industry. Who the thunk? Where black people really are not present, which is super unfortunate. And, and there's a history behind it. So let's talk about it. July 9th, July 9th. 1868, that's when Congress decreed that African Americans were citizens. That's when we became human to them, allegedly. So during this process, they African Americans were supposed to gain rights and freedoms under the Constitution, just like every other man that was supposed to happen and that was supposed to include the Second Amendment right. But in reality, black people were not allowed to own weapons, obviously. When They were at war. It was the Civil War. Black soldiers were given weapons, and they were were allowed to use them. But white people felt nervous around them with weapons. I don't know why they thought they, they should feel safe, but whatever. After Nat Turner's uprising, this is when lawmakers started to say, okay, hold on. Black people cannot just have guns. That's, let's just hold on here. Did you see what Nat did? Let's talk about it, okay? So then when the soldiers came back from the war, they were originally allowed to keep their weapons, some of them, but not all of them. And in Mississippi and in Florida, they didn't want to acknowledge that soldiers should have the right to keep their weapon. They didn't like that. So they started to pass laws, and these laws were called the Black Code Laws, and that restricted free men from owning guns or any other weapons, okay? So white vigilantes used to go break into people's houses and steal their weapons from them, kill them. Let's just start there. They would kill them and then steal their weapons out of their houses. So that's how um, 
originally black people started to get removed from the industry or, or not allowed to protect themselves, okay? So then did you know that Dr. King, after his house was uh, burned, he decided to apply for his concealed carry permit because he wanted to carry on him, and they denied him. They they denied him the opportunity to do that. So that happened. Um, there was more things that happened, but basically – the Firearms Act came in 1934, and that was signed in by President Delano Roosevelt. And what that did was that imposed a tax on machine guns and sawed-off shotguns. And so those were the weapons that the urban organized crime used. That's what they used. And so that was another reason that that was passed. The Black Panthers was a reason that more, uh, more gun control acts were passed. 1967, members of the Black Panther Party uh, congregated at the California State Capitol. They were carrying guns then. They were protesting police brutality, and they were protesting the Mumford Bill, which is a bill restricting guns. And so that was a bill that restricted gun control to ban open carry for loaded weapons in that state. So that did pass, and that was one of the reasons. The bill was signed into law. Gun control continues to happen. New York was a really bad place for stop and frisk. I've talked about this on the show before. New York used to stop and frisk talking about guns, but then they would get people on cannabis charges. Whole time cannabis was legal, and it was not something that was an arrestable offense in New York. But you see how all of this correlates? Like, that's why I feel so at home in the gun industry as opposed to, you know, leaving the cannabis industry. It's literally damn near the same fight. It's so ridiculous how our rights have been stripped from us. And so um, let me tell you what happened. In 2010, Marissa Alexander, she fired a warning shot at her husband after he threatened her. No one was injured. No one was hurt. They still sentenced her to 20 years in prison. Okay? They still sentenced her. So this is what I'm saying. Like, things are different, totally different for a white person versus a black person. Now, she got 20 years she was sentenced. Do you remember in 2016 when the Bundy family did a 41-day siege at the Oregon uh, federal land ownership. Did you remember that? They literally took over a goddamn federal building. All of them lived. Damn near all of them. No, one person was killed. He was shot and killed. But all of them lived, and no new gun laws were created. Crazy. They took over a federal building. Things are not the same for white people versus black people, and this is why. This is Black History Month, so I need to tell you guys this. 2017, a white nationalist fired a shot during a rally in Charlottesville, Virginia. Remember that? He shot at the ground. Video showed it. Everyone knew it was him. They pointed to him. They literally let him leave, and they didn't arrest him until two weeks later. Two weeks later. Negligent discharge, attempted murder, assault. Like, he should have been charged with so many different things. He wasn't arrested until two weeks later. NRA... They want fewer gun, re gun restrictions, right, on purchasing and carrying, and they say that they speak for all gun owners. Remember when Philandro Castile was killed? Remember when he was a, a lawful gun owner? Remember that? NRA said they, didn't, they declined to even make a comment on it for over a year. They didn't say anything about it. Then when they did, they reprimanded him for having marijuana in the car. You remember that? It's the same fight. It literally feels like the same fight to me. It's sickening what's happening. For 150 years, black Americans have been fighting for the equal rights granted under the Constitution. Over 150 years. They face way different opposition than their white counterparts when it comes to gun ownership and being equal in America. This is why I'm talking about this, and this is why I'm so passionate about this fight, because I truly want us to be more disciplined more aware of what's going on, and more protected. And you can't do that by being ignorant. That's not an option, okay? So, guys, that's my show. Look how fast the hour goes. Ain't that crazy? Crazy. Anyway, I've missed you guys so much. And I can't wait to sh go on this journey with you guys. And we uh, learn all of this together because as I learn, I teach and, and you can learn with me. And I think this is going to really, really be beneficial to other people as well. So I'm going to leave with Tangie's tactical thoughts because we're changing things around around here. OK. All right. So first, I'm going to say be kind, be careful, 
and be about your coins, okay? Know that things are going to be okay. I know it seems rough out there, but it is going to be okay, okay? Be honest always. Be loyal to those that deserve it. And don't get distracted from things that are trying to distract you from your purpose, okay? And with that being said, my name is Tangerine. I'm the CEO of Tactical Tangerine Defense. And I am a award-winning author and Marine Corps veteran. And I may not be nothing to you, but I'm the shit where I'm from, okay? I love you guys so much. I can't wait to see you on the next episode of Chocolate Tangerine. And with that being said, I am out. From a newbie and queen of cannabis I get lifted, you get lifted We get lifted, let's get lifted I get lifted, you get lifted We get lifted